This is a memory card. On this memory card are a whole bunch of images from a proposal that I just shot at 2 p.m. It is now 5 p.m. I've just gotten home. It is an insanely glorious day out and I really would like to go and mow the lawn for the last time before the cold weather sets in for the fall. My partner and I want to go for a walk with the dog. We've got, we got things we want to do. So how are we going to accomplish this knowing that there's photos on here that need to be called and edited and that I'd like to get to the client pretty quickly because a proposal is a it's a big moment and they want to share it as soon as possible. I'm going to take you through my editing workflow and how I use Imagine AI to expedite this process so that I can get images off quickly with minimal amount of work using the tools that I have set up to make my life easier. If you don't know me, my name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings. Basically, if there's people involved, I photograph it. I have a pretty busy week coming up, but I know I want to get these images out as quickly as possible. And this happens pretty often. I'll have many different shoots than I do in a week and a lot of them are quick turnaround times because they're like for businesses, they're about events, they're things that they want to be able to post right away. So I'm going to take you through how I adjust the images, back them up and how I go about using Imagine AI to cull, edit and how long it takes to do that whole process and just how quick it can actually be. Okay, so with uh, YouTube magic, it's uh, 511 because everything takes longer with YouTube. So we have everything set up here and we are ready to go First thing we're gonna do, we import everything through Lightroom. That's how I prefer to work. Uh, it's a workflow that I didn't always do, but I find much easier. So we've gone through, we've selected all of our images, and from here, we're going to import them and make a second copy uh, all through Lightroom. So in terms of file handling, if you look here, we are gonna build standard previews as well as smart previews. This is gonna take a little bit longer on the front, but it makes it faster to edit everything later. We have everything set up. We've made a second copy. Um, from here, when it comes to file renaming, we're gonna go rename files. I have my own sort of custom thing that I do. It's really just a date thing. I picked up most of this, to be honest, from Sam Hurd. He's a great wedding photographer who just, his workflows are really smart, so I've basically stolen all of them. So, so we'll hit import. It's going to copy and import these images. It's going to take quite a while because, like I said, I am adding to a spinning disk drive as well as an external hard drive. And uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, so Lightroom has finished everything it needs to do. We've copied and imported everything. We've built our standard and our smart previews. The reason I build smart previews is because sometimes I like to do editing on the go and I just like to have them available and not have to worry about whether or not I have my external hard drive. So that's why the smart previews exist. I'm gonna open up Imagine AI. Great, so this is kind of our, our culling studio. If you go to AI profiles here, there's gonna be a whole bunch of AI profiles uh, that you can look at that have been created by like amazing photographers that are all here. Uh, I don't really use any of those, I've tried them, but I have my own personal AI profile, um, which is here, and this is what I use to edit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to projects. We're going to go to create a new project. We are going to call and edit it. Uh, the calling uh, part of Imagine is currently still in beta, which is awesome, so it means that everything's free. So we go into our Lightroom catalog, we go to the folder that we want to use, which is this guy here and then we're going to go to edited previews. I keep this on because I, I like to see what the general edit would look like. We're gonna go to choose AI profile, color film, that's my current one that I use, and hit upload. It's gonna upload the photos and it's gonna cull them. So we started that at 5.45 after everything was done and it is currently culling through those photos. In the meantime, we're gonna do a bit of a wardrobe change here because we're gonna go out and uh, mow the lawn in a minute. And I don't wanna mow it in this insane shirt I'm wearing. So we'll be back. Okay, so I got two rows in and uh, Imagine just sent me an email saying that uh, my culling project is ready. I don't know if you can see that. <sighs> so I guess we gotta go deal with that. Sometimes it's too fast. All right, so a little impromptu scene change here because Imagine's already done. So um, let's see here. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hit review culling. It is going to open up the culling results. It'll export the photo ratings. If we hit here, export photo ratings, it is going to then export those into our Lightroom catalog. It'll open up Lightroom. So if we look through here, basically the greens are the keepers, the blues are standalone. So we have like a whole bunch of images here that are all more or less the same and it says this is by its measure, the best one. And then the blues are the standalone, so there's no other photo like it. It means that it's going to keep that one 
and that's that. We're going to assume that we like this and we're just gonna see what happens if we use Imagine to edit all the photos that it decided was best. We're gonna open back up Imagine. We go to that review culling again. From here, we go to here and we say, import your changes after review from a Lightroom catalog or XMP files. We're gonna say import changes again. We're gonna hit edit 366 photos. From here, we know we wanna use the color film profile and we can make adjustments to that too, which is really cool. So if I click onto this and I say, you know what, generally speaking, I know for sure that I always like it if my highlights are a little higher or a little lower, that's something I could do here. So I could go to bring up the AI value by three or four or five or anything like that. But we're not gonna do that for now. We're just gonna hit cancel. Uh, what I am gonna do is I am going to ask it to do a automatic straighten because I actually find that the straighten tool on this is pretty solid. And we're gonna see that our total cost for this, 366 photos with the straightening is $21.96. Without it is $8.30. So that is the total cost. Again, keep in mind, you're gonna have 1500 free edits. So a gallery like this isn't gonna cost you anything and you could edit uh, you know, five galleries, close to five galleries of this size and, and it'd be fine. So we'll hit straighten and we're gonna hit send and it is going to go ahead and just edit all those photos for us. It's doing its thing, it's editing, and we're gonna go back out and mow more of the lawn while it's doing that. Yeah, you guessed it. So my Imagine edits are ready. Um, it's 6.17, so we started this process. We ingested the photos into Lightroom just over an hour ago, and that is with all the processing, smart previews built, standard previews built, putting it onto a secondary hard drive, which is the spinning disk hard drive, like a slow one. From there, putting them into Imagine, culling, editing, finished product. Now, finished product? No, I'm still gonna go through, trust but verify, right? I'm gonna go through all of them and, and I'm gonna probably do some of my own edits, but I have 300 and something images that in a pinch, if I had to, I could deliver right away if I needed to do like a, you know, three hour turnaround time or something like that. And they would be, they would be good images. So we're, we're gonna go look at them, but honestly, like I can't stop mowing again because of that. So I'm just gonna have to wait. Imagine be me. Imagine can edit a gallery faster than I can mow my lawn. All right, so. Lawn's done, great, finished. Uh, Imagine beat me for sure. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through the final edits from Imagine. We're gonna talk a little bit about them and, and talk a little bit about what Imagine does when it's editing and some of the shortcomings, some of the things that I think are great and, and kind of give a bit of a, a sense of it all. So, so we start in Imagine and we click download to review. It's going to take a minute. It is going to download the edits and then it, it will add them to the Lightroom catalog. Open up the Lightroom catalog, it'll do that automatically, which is nice. Then from here, what we can do is we can see the kind of quick before and after. So this is what Imagine has decided. This is before, this is after. This is before, this is after. Nothing drastic because what it's doing is it's using my, my preset. So in order to use Imagine to its sort of fullest degree, what you want to do is you want to process enough images through Imagine that the AI can actually learn from your edits. So what you can do to get things started is you can start with one of those talent profiles or start with one of your own presets. I started with one of my own presets that I think works well with the photos and the, the way that I edit and then kind of went from there. So it's going to take that preset, it's going to use that preset and then the biggest things it's going to do is it's going to adjust exposure and white balance because that's something that I don't touch with my preset. I do all of that manually typically anyways. So that's something that it's really helping with. It's helping to create kind of a consistent look across the board by utilizing, um, utilizing its AI kind of profile to do that. So a photo like this, what we can see is that for sure, I underexposed this photo when I shot it um, just to protect some of the highlights there because you know that's typically how I'll shoot if I'm in a really bright space like this. And we can see that AI did a very good job of just kind of opening up the shadows a little bit, making everything brighter, adjusting that and going from there. So the big question here is, did it do a good job of selecting the images I would have selected and did it edit them in the way that I would have edited them? What I would typically do from here is I would take this filter and I would go through all these images and I would select the ones I want. Uh, the ones that I don't want, I would probably just X them for now. From there, I would open up the gallery to the full amount of images. I would take out any of the ones that I already removed. I would take out any of the blue and greens and I would just go through the rest of them and quickly go through and decide if there's any keepers for me that I missed. 
the question you might be asking yourself is, is the culling actually any faster than just me doing it myself? Yes and no, again. I mean, certainly it culled it very quickly, but I have to go through and I have to make some secondary adjustments. What I think is that in a shoot like this where I have 1,465 photos, I could probably go through that and cull it fairly effectively. So if the cull was a paid part of this, I might not use it. However, if I was editing a wedding day where I have to cull 7,000 images, I probably would find it pretty effective and, and, and pretty helpful, and I would probably find myself more trusting. And as time goes on, it's going to do a better and better job of culling, and, and that's why it's in beta right now, because they know it's not 100%, but, it, but it's doing a good job. The other question, and a very fair question to ask, is like, hey Chris, this was a $20 investment. Why not take 20 bucks and pay a kid in your neighborhood to mow your lawn and then edit everything yourself? Fair enough, that, that, that's a valid question. I think the reality is that, firstly, my lawn is too big and I probably would feel bad about paying someone 20 bucks to, to mow that thing because it does take quite a while. Secondly, ultimately, I do love editing and I love going through that process. However, if you're like me, sometimes, you know, just staring at a screen for that long can get really tiring and, and you start to be a little bit less effective and you have to come back multiple times. And this just saves me, because now I can go through this and I could do the full cull in one sit down and feel comfortable doing that and not have to really take much of a break. So ultimately it, it, it does help. And, and also I like mowing my lawn. Like it's, it's enjoyable for me to get outside and do something that's not sitting at my screen. The final question is, okay, so great, you have this edited gallery, but is it actually ready to go? Would I put this up? on my pick time and send it to them? No, I wouldn't. I, 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 I'm not gonna pretend like I would. However, if I was in a tight spot and I couldn't do any more edits to this, and the only thing I could do was to go through quickly and cull it, would I feel comfortable sending this along? Yeah, I would. Would it be the perfect example of my work? Is it portfolio level work? I think some of the images that are in here from today actually do have the potential to be portfolio work, but they will require some more massaging of editing. But in the environment that I find myself in often, which is having to get images out quite quickly, for example, uh, two days from now, I'm gonna be shooting an event. It is the launch of a non-alcoholic cocktail line. And that is something where for sure they're gonna wanna get the images out next day. For me, I'm gonna be there till 10 o'clock at night. That means by the time I get home, it's gonna be 11.30. I can throw all this stuff into Imagine. I can be in bed asleep by midnight, and then the next morning I can have the culled and edited images for me. I can choose 10 to 30 of those images, send them off right away so they have something to post right away, and then I can take that morning and finish the full gallery and get it to them still in like less than 24 hours from the time that I took those images. Of course you could do that on your own. You could, but you would be burning the midnight oil, you would be very tired, and it just, it wouldn't be as smooth of a workflow. Add to that the fact that I actually have a bunch of video editing to do on top of that, and it just makes for a much smoother experience for me this week, something that I'm very grateful for. So do I think that Imagine AI is for you? I have no idea. Is it for me? For sure, I found that it's very, very helpful. I'm really glad to be an ambassador for it, and I do think that there's so much opportunity here for this to get better and better, and, and I'm pretty stoked to see where it goes. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Again, down below, 1,500 free edits if you want to check those out. If you have questions about Imagine AI, let me know. Jump onto their Facebook group. There's this guy, Scott, there who is part of the, um, he's like a community engagement. I don't know what his title is. I'll put it up here. He's the best. He's so knowledgeable. He's an amazing photographer and he answers like every single question that people have. It's amazing. So go check it out. Learn a little bit more. I definitely recommend it and we'll see you in the next one.